Hi there, uh, my name is Antonio Garcia Gomez and my presentation blogging about my love life, female gendered roles, femininities and verbal aggressiveness is part of an ongoing project and, and today I will try to answer some basic questions about how our personal uh, weblogs open up a new contest for female identity construction. Uh, let me just show my presentation at a glance. So first, uh, I will present the motivation now for the study, then the objectives, and, the, and I will just give a short introduction to the, to the study. Then I will move on to the methodology and the research question. And most of my presentation will be devoted just to analyzing uh, Spanish and British female teens' narrations of their love life. And then I will bring my presentation to an end just by drawing some of the most relevant concluding uh, remarks or conclusions. All right, so we, we go. I'm sure we're all aware that technological changes are transforming our society into a complex and a, and a virtual reality. And the effect is not just on the role of communication, but also um, on social relationships. And that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to study the way female teenagers, as I said, British and Spanish, female teenagers communicate and maintain social relationships. And in doing so, as I, I said before, uh, I wanted to answer some basic questions about how personal weblogs open up a new contest for female identity construction and special emphasis on the disclosure of personal information, as this will allow me just to understand, to further study the changes the words public and private are undergoing. Moving to the uh, objectives, my study is um, an attempt to analyze different gendered discourses these British and Spanish female teenagers live out when they're narrating, on the one hand, the current, and on the other, the former romantic uh, relationship. So, and more precisely, as a discourse analyst, uh, my aim was to identify the pragma discursive strategies involved in the construction of these female teenagers self-concepts. So when uh, exploring how these teens self-present when they're when they in love and uh, when the relationship uh, was over, it was possible to address competing narratives. That is, it was possible to draw a line between the current romantic uh, relationship and the former romantic relationship. In the, in the case that as for the current romantic relationship, uh, it was possible to identify the persistence of traditional patriarchal feminine behaviors. And on the other hand, when they were narrating the former romantic relationship, um, it was possible to identify the presence of a growing added culture. That is, in, um, it was possible then to... Uh, let's see if it works. That's it. Um, it was possible to see how they were just using um, aggressive language just to evaluate and regulate uh, social behavior. And it was also possible just to uh, call attention to a process of pornification. That is, they use a pornographic language in a non-pornographic contest. In other words, um, these girls use pornified language just to shame and attack the ex-boyfriends. As for the uh, methodology, the corpus and participants uh, that I used, uh, I've just compiled a blog, uh, a blog corpus comprising almost 600 entries written by uh, British and Spanish female heterosexual uh, teenagers. Uh, it was difficult to find blogs where the very same, and that was important, the very same girl was narrating uh, a loving relationship, and that very girl was also narrating uh, the end of the relationship just to establish the contrast using the very same the very same uh, person. So in the end, I was able to compile uh, thirty uh, four personal weblogs, um, so the British uh, weblogs comprising one hundred and fifty five entries. When uh, these thirty four girls were narrating the loving relationships, and one hundred and thirty nine entries where these very same uh, teenagers were narrating the broken. Relationships. As for the Spanish weblogs, 31 uh, personal weblogs, but a similar number of entries, 158 entries, when there's 31 uh, teenagers were narrating the loving relationships, and 147 entries where these 31 uh, teenagers were narrating the broken relationships, the end of the 
of the relationship. In the end, I was able just to compile uh, 9,529 annotated utterances, paying attention to the pragmatic meaning behind all these utterances, and as for the uh, Spanish word box, uh, similar number, almost uh, 10,000 annotated uh, utterances. All these, uh, all these blogs were taken from uh, blogger.com or student of the world, the uh, open uh, blogs where anybody can just write uh, and where anybody can have access to. Um, don't panic, I'm not going just to go over this. Uh, this is just for, uh, for you to have a, a clear picture of what I did with all these annotated utterances. I divided all these utterances into the use of directives, how they were trying to impose a course of action or suggest a course of action, whether it was a case of a, of a warning or, or a threat, and whether we're just using informatives, whether we're just using utterances just to evaluate uh, themselves in a positive manner or in a negative manner, or whether we're just uh, um, evaluating others uh, in a positive or in a negative way, just to, to get a, a clear picture of the sort of um, linguistic strategies these uh, teenagers were using, both in the British and the Spanish uh, sample of data. The research question uh, that I will uh, address today, simple, is just do Spanish and British teenage female bloggers, narrations of their love lives in personal web blog writing, allow them to continuously renegotiate boundaries of gender. And so let's go then for the, for the analysis, just to uh, present it in an organized manner. Uh, I will pay attention to the, as I said, uh, I pay attention to the narrations of these uh, British and Spanish teens' love lives. Um, and then I will pay attention to uh, the discursive positioning when they entering the love relationship. And then I will move on then to the uh, discursive positioning when they're leaving the, that loving relationship. So just to do it in an organized manner, let's pay attention first to them, uh, to the discursive positioning they adopt when they're entering a loving, a loving relationship. When these girls are narrating the current uh, loving relationship, uh, it's possible to see how their discursive positioning uh, goes from a person-based identity to a relational social identity. So uh, the Left and they just move from this person based identity, there's a case of social mobility, where they just appear to this uh, social, uh, to this relational uh, social uh, identity. So, in other words, uh, the idea is uh, the narrations seem to revolve around the, uh, a simple a simple thing. This is not about me, this is about us. In, uh, in doing so, uh, I was able to identify two different positionings. Uh, the first one, uh, the fairy tale princess in love uh, with her hero, and the second one, the exemplary woman. Then, as I, uh, as I, I did with the uh, positionings, first I will pay attention to the fairy tale princess in love uh, with her hero, and then I will move on to the to analyzing the exemplary exemplary uh, woman. All right. When uh, narrating their current loving relationship, these girls self present as the fairy tale. Princess, uh, this uh, and this this uh, uh, positioning is based on two main uh, strategies. On the one hand, ingratiation. This is just an attempt to get others uh, to like you. And the second one is supplication. That's an attempt to get others to take pity on you as uh, helpless and needy. So they're always dependent on the on the boyfriends. Uh, let me just show you the first uh, the first example. Uh, as you will see, uh, these narrations look like a real fairy tale. So we go uh, we go setting, we go problem, we go also, uh, a solution. Just for you to get a, um, an idea of what these uh, narrations look like. Uh, Sixteen years old uh, girl. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, there was a young guy who was so cute that every girl was in love with him. One day at high school, he went up to that ugly girl and asked her the time. She couldn't help stuttering. He was so handsome. There was no doubt she had fallen in love at first sight. Uh, one day, his friends told him a story about this girl. His friends told him she was a bitch a lot of the time and liked to play games just to see how much she could get out of him and see how much she could get him to do. At first, he took all of it and stopped seeing her. 
But one day, he pulled himself together, stood up for himself, and decided to start dating her again. Day by day, he fought against those who thought she was no good, and with the strength of his love, she's the woman of his life. They lived happily ever after. All right, let me show you one more, one more example. That's a 15 years old uh, girl. I've loved him since the first moment I saw him when he asked me for a date. I couldn't believe such a guy could have set his eyes on me. Don't know what he can see in me. He's got everything I always wanted. He's so handsome. I can never say no to him. His smile, his eyes, he's so charming. I love him much more than words can say. We've been going out for three weeks and my work is a better place of him. Well, you can see, it's three weeks. Um, my whole life has changed since he came in. I'm so deeply in love. I get up every morning thinking of him. I get up because of him. He's my reason, my world, my everything. He told me what love is. Now I want to show him I'm the woman he wants me to be. I'll dress and do as he wants. I promise I will never see myself as the ugly duckling I used to be. I feel so alive for them for the first time. The notice of these are very generations. They claim common ground by presenting themselves as one with them, with, them, with the males. They subordinate other individual rights and, and freedoms just to the loving, to the loving relationship. Just for you to, uh, to see an example in, in Spanish. Um, that's the example in Spanish and I just translated into, uh, into English in case you cannot read uh, Spanish. Just for you to see that we go very similar, very similar examples. I'm not going to read it this time um, as that's been recorded. You can pause it and, and read it just for you to see that we call the very same the very same uh, strategies. So in, uh, in a nutshell, just in these narrations, they, they tend to explode informatives just to self-evaluate the blog negatively. They they just always we've, we find examples of self-criticism. I'm so damn stupid. Also examples of self-condemnation. I'm too blameful for what he did. It's my fault. They are always to blame. Uh, and of course, cases of complacency. I didn't sleep a wing last night, but she spent the whole the whole night just writing a paper uh, for her uh, boyfriend while he was out with uh, with the guys. And apart from these informatives, we always get a positive evaluation of the of the boyfriend, either in a direct or an indirect uh, manner. Uh, cases of exacerbations of love. Love is everything. Uh, remember that he changed her uh, world in just three weeks. And of course, exaggerations of the boyfriend's physical and personality traits. He's the most handsome guy I've ever seen. Um, and we just see um, how the, uh, the, this, uh, this change as the, the, uh, the bloggers evaluate themselves positively in a direct or an indirect manner when the relationship has started. So this is a case of self-transformation. Before that, they were stupid, they were ugly, they didn't know what to do, what to say. And now because they're in a relationship, then they're not the, the person they used to be. And because of that, because of this person, because of this hero, uh, self-praise will come. Now I'm beautiful both on the inside and the outside. So the relationship has changed uh, their lives dramatically. Apart from the fairy tale princess, as I said, uh, we also get examples of the exemplary, the exemplary woman. Um, this uh, positioning, the exemplary, the exemplary uh, woman, is, seems to be connected with the poor self-esteem. So these uh, these teenagers feel useless, and 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 because they feel useless, they imitate somebody to enhance the positivity of the self-concept. And uh, this time they do it by means of two different uh, linguistic strategies. On the one hand, self-promotion. That's an attempt to persuade others. Uh, that you're competent, and the second uh, strategy is uh, simplification. That's an, an attempt to get others to regard you as a morally respectable uh, individual. Um, so finally, this strategy has nothing to do with the ancient Christian practice of setting up saints as other good women as an example. But they, what they do, basically, they, uh, they just get this uh, respect just by imitating a, a celebrity. I'm just giving them an example for you uh, for you to see. I often wonder who I am. I look at myself in the mirror and I don't see that ugly girl I used to be. I still remember how I was, fat, ugly, with pimples. Nobody would invited me over to the house, never been to the party or anything. 
It took me a couple of months to believe Andrew really wanted to be with me. I owe him so many things, things he didn't know before. He was the one who told me about Paris. Uh, she's referring to Paris Hilton. I'd never heard that name before. Strange enough. Couldn't imagine he could teach me so many things. At first I didn't like her, who was this woman? But then I started watching some of the things she'd done and she's cool. She's she's perfect. I like her style, her body, what can I say? I'm her best fan. I always think what she would do, how she would do things, and I do them. I'm like a celebrity now. Thanks to her, I'm the woman I wanted, I wanted to be. This time uh, an example in um, in Spanish, uh, I've also translated an uh, example in Spanish so everybody can, uh, can follow the, uh, the example. The first time he asked me why I didn't dress like her, I thought he was joking. Was he blind? Me, dressed like Soraya. That's a very popular Spanish singer in Spain. Um, and I, had I her body or face, he really dropped me out the wall. Step by step, I started paying attention to the way she dressed. She seems to be a good girl. In the beginning, it pissed me off to dress like Soraya. I felt stupid wearing that short skirt and showing my boobs. But Juan didn't stop uh, talking about her, about her world, how well she sang, how much she cited him. I'm looking forward to seeing him this afternoon when he says that I had my hair dyed and cut, as she did. Um, he will love me even, even more. So notice how in this case, uh, we always get examples of informatives where the blogger will self-evaluate in a negative manner. We get cases of self-criticism, my legs are not good enough to wear this dress, cases of self-condemnation, I always spoil everything, they're always to blame. And of course, the dependence upon the boyfriends, I'm lost without him. So the lives has changed because of, because of the relationship. And needless to say, uh, we get this time Informative just to evaluate other women are positively in a direct and an indirect manner. So they express their admiration towards this celebrity. Uh, Rihanna is a goddess, she's perfect, there's nothing I don't like about her. I wanted to be her in every way. I love those sunglasses that Victoria, Victoria Beckham, Paris, Lindsay, and my Britney wears. Um, and because of that, then she's allowed to self evaluate positively. Uh, because we just get a case of self-transformation that comes because of the imitation. I'm more like her now. I got Rihanna's pixie haircut and then surprise is, is possible. I look great with Paris sunglasses. So everything is because of because of these uh, celebrities. As I said, uh, when analyzing the narrations of their team's love lives, it was possible to uh, to draw a fine line between the discursive positioning when they were entering the loving relationship and when they were leaving the loving relationship. Let's focus our attention on this uh, second part. Uh, when dealing with this type of positionings, uh, we just see the opposite of phenomenon, where they just move away from this relational social identity. There's an example of social creativity, and, and they just adopt a personal based identity. It's not about us, it's about me. When doing that, uh, two uh, different uh, positionings, the woman as a sex object and the disciplinary woman. Uh, as I did before, I will focus my attention on the woman as a uh, sex object and then I will move on to the disciplinary uh, woman. When uh, presenting themselves as a sex object, um, they, they use two main strategies. First is a case of self-assessment. They draw a line between the present and the past. Uh, and they try to present themselves as independent, independent women. Now they are self-sufficient. Uh, Let me just say in advance, as you can see right there, that the examples uh, contain dirty language, so this adult content. Uh, just uh, before you see the, the, the examples, so some of them, uh, I'm sure they will rock you. Um, mainly because um, there's an explicit reference to genitals and, and bodily bodily functions when they're expressing their, their anger. Um, initially, I thought that this way was um, this strategy was just a way to uh, to be assertive. But in the end, uh, it was pretty simple to see that it was just a, an attempt to get the boyfriends back. So it, it was not that they were just claiming their independence. It was just uh, they were using their own body as um, as a way just to to say hey. Here I am, come back to me. Uh, let me just uh, have a look at the example. Uh, you dickhead, don't know how the hell I ever love you or kiss you or touch you. 
I hate to you when you get these and uh, those uh, teeny tiny balls in a sale half price. Is it legal to have such a thing and call yourself a man? If I were you, I would have a pin's job and you wore me to that hill again. You know I'm too much a man for you. I'm curvy, big tits and ass, but I'm slim. You won't have me again. You should have thought better before you kiss this bitchy friend of, of yours. And um, in the case of a um, Spanish example, once again, you got the, the example in Spanish and the uh, English translation, uh, which is called a very similar strategy. Uh, as this is a recording, you can pause it and, and read it just to see that we got a very similar, very similar uh, strategy. And what we can just get this time is that they, they try to they evaluate uh, the, bo the, the, the boyfriend negatively, mainly by means of insults, any type of insults. Um, and of course, we also get some negative appraisal of the opposite gender in general in general terms. Men know nothing about women, nothing at all. And it's quite common just to question the reputation uh, of the ex-boyfriend's uh, virility. Um, loads of directives, loads of orders, don't do this, don't call me again, leave me alone. And of course, we get um, irony in, in between. If I were you, I would see my doctor soon to enlarge your P, and I say you so for uh, your own for your own good. And just to finish off the the, the last case, the disciplinary woman. Uh, this time, they they rely on two main strategies: the case of self promotion, where they uh, they just try to convince others that they're competent, and they do so by intimidation, by making others think that they are actually dangerous. Um, so here we just get a redefinition of gender roles in terms of social comparison. So we always get this in-group uh, strategy, we women versus the out-group, you, you men. Uh, the strategy is simple. We just get informatives. In a way, we understand they're angry because their relationship is over. So it's common just to evaluate their the ex-boyfriends uh, negatively by means of insults and negative appraisal of the opposite gender, similar to the previous uh, examples that I showed. But this time it's slightly different in the case of the use of directives. Uh, so we just get direct and indirect threats and direct and indirect warnings. Stop pestering or I will kick your ass. Could anyone do me a favor and get out of my life? Mind your words. And what's interesting uh, here is that all those threats and, and warnings would always go with a negative consequence. And when establishing this negative consequence, it is also possible to, to draw a fine line between the way British female teenagers do it and Spanish female teenagers do it. When they include this negative consequence, let's see if I make myself understood, these British female teenagers refer to their own bodies as if uh, their bodies were a male body. However, in the case of Spanish female uh, teenagers, what they do, they just and then they just refer to the uh, to a female body, uh, but feminizing traditional expressions that in Spanish we always refer to the male body. And it sounds sounds difficult. Probably when showing the example, it would be much easier uh, to understand what I mean. Let me just give you an example. Um, that's the the English example. I tell you, stop screwing me, or I will slap my salami all over you. Leave me alone or I will wrap my plate and I will fuck you um, doggy style till I come or I will shoot my load into your mouth. That's what I mean. So we just got this, the threat and the negative consequence, but that this negative consequence uh, revolves around a main body. So the, the, we can see a use and a validation of masculine expressions that assert power. In the case of um, Spanish, the Spanish examples, uh, so now it's, it may be difficult to see if you can if you cannot read uh, Spanish, but this time, but uh, probably in English you will just get a, a taste of what I mean. This really makes my nipples swell. Uh, this time they're just using uh, a reference to a female body. However, in Spanish we never use uh, nipples as, as the as part of the idiomatic structure, but we just uh, we always get a, a reference to. Uh, a male to the male body, just to the, um, to the male genitals. Hey, um, to hear your voice, jerk off my hand, uh, stop touching my, my lips. Um, again, there's also a reference to the female body. There's a feminization of um, dirty language we use in Spanish, but the, 
when we always use when we always use references to the to the uh, male body. And just to finish off, just to bring my presentation to uh, to an end, let me just say that personal web blogs are a medium where these female teenagers bloggers actively construct their own persona. And when analyzing these narrations, as I say, it was possible to get these competing narratives, these patriarchal feminine behaviors versus these transforming discourses. And, and that these narrations revolve around the acceptance or the rejection of heteronormative uh, behavior. And that the expression of assertiveness, of course, uh, showed uh, examples of distorted pictures of women's, of women's uh, uh, power. Uh, examples that could be just analyzed much further, but as I just had a few minutes just to go over them. And, but it was possible just to see women's position in the public arena as still full of contradictions. That there is a tendency to exploit hypersexual language, uh, we could speak about days for hours. And of course, there, there is a presence of a growing ladder culture in Britain, Spain, that we, uh, we could also, we could also uh, discuss in terms of the validation of these masculine or feminine uh, references to, uh, to the body. So let me just uh, say thank you very much for uh, your attention. Bye for now.